All right, welcome back. Um, what I want to do now is, um, before we get into the SEIR model, um, I just real quickly want to review the kind of the idea of the blind tag in a room um, idea. Um, so blue dots represent susceptible people. Right now, there's there are no one no infected people in the room, um, so no one's going to get sick. But in our little game, let's just say that this person just became we introduce an infected person all right and they start bumping around into people um, and so that creates more infected people so the red dots will be infected people and we're going to consider you know they randomly walk around they they avoid each you know they don't bump into each other um, for a while but eventually you know as they mix around there's another collision might happen and an infected person makes a susceptible person get infected um, now we're going to be adding, uh, let me just do this, uh, not the yellow would be a terrible color. Um, let me add it in, uh, we'll do a light shade of blue. Um, we're going to do, um, E, which will be exposed. That will be coming up, but we're not going to put it into this model. Exposed people are still like susceptible people. They're not going to infect anyone. Um, and they can't get reinfected because they're they've already been exposed. So um, they're going to become uh, infected, but we won't add those into the model yet. Um, the key is that while we might be adding more infected people over time, some of the previously infected people become removed, and we'll assume that they become immune. So. Let's add an infected person, and then let's make one of those infected people that were already there, they just became immune, right? So you can see that if we can have the uh, people who were infected leaving the infected pool and becoming immune um, as fast as new people are becoming infected, um, you know, the, the infection's not going to spread that much. Now, what's going to eventually happen, though, which is even better, um, the infected people stop bumping into susceptible people so much because you can see over time, uh, the number of people who just can't get sick will have grown. So let's assume that each infected person, you know, they, they infected somebody, but then that person, you know, they eventually become immune before infecting somebody else. So we get more and more green dots out there. And then what happens is um, these infected people are just as likely to collide with an, um, an immune person as they are to collide with a susceptible person. Um, so the number of times there just aren't as many susceptible people around. Um, so they keep bumping into people, but they're just as likely to bump into somebody who's not susceptible um, as as someone who is. So before, when it was just the S, um, SI model, um, they would eventually hit all of the susceptible people um, because once you were infected, you were always infected. So if this were a game of tag, once you're it, you're always it until everyone has been captured. Um, but now what's happening is people who were it suddenly um, become permanently not it. And um, so they, they kind of crowd up the game and um, eventually all of these infected people, they are only bumping into um, people, oh, I should write out what the green is. Um, that is the, they're only running into removed people. And so the game is, um, is going to end because all of the infected people will become removed um, and some susceptible people were never tagged. Um, so that's kind of what we were looking at in our MATLAB model. Now, let me uh, get back to um, the SEIR model in more detail. Um, so we've been looking at the SIR model. We just need to put another letter in there, S-E-I-R. And I'll just put little circles around these. We know that E is exposed. I'll write that under there because that's the new one. They're exposed. Now, the key is when you are exposed, two things are key. Um, you will become infected. 100%, you will become 
infected. There's no way not to avoid it at this point. Um, although we could have um, in the exposed category, I guess there are some people who um, may just have a natural immunity that happens sometimes. Um, doesn't seem like um, with COVID-19, there are too many people in that category. Um, so the only way you can um, be immune is to already have recovered. Um, so you will become infected is one of the things that will be true. Um, you um, will stay uh, exposed because uh, you can't get doubly in infected. You will stay exposed even when exposed to more eyes. So at this point, you've been exposed. Um, you know, you, by avoiding eyes, you 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 can't avoid getting sick. You're still going to get sick. Um, but the key, this is probably the key thing here, is you are not contagious. So in terms of our little tag model, if E's hit S's, um, they don't infect the S's, okay? Um, even though they've been exposed, you can't affect, um, the S's are only in danger if they bump into an I. Um, so that is the key part of our model. You're not yet ready to spread the disease, but you're kind of in a holding tank. Um, you will move to I, but it creates a delay, which actually makes the modeling a little more complicated because the data we're seeing today um, of infected people, um, it, there was a lag because they, the, an infected person came in contact with a susceptible person and put them in the exposed category and they're hanging out in the exposed category for a while before they move into the infected category. So an infected person today probably um, was exposed several weeks back and they're just starting to show um, signs of it. Even worse is people who are infected um, who don't yet show symptoms, they may be infecting people and they don't even know it. So that's that's the real danger is that people who are contagious don't even know it yet. But we need to change our model a little, a little bit. Let's put in our flow arrows. We're not going to have a vaccine, so there is no, there's no bypass. We can't go from S to R, we're just going to um, get rid of that. So there's no bypassing um, going through um, the road, but, but possibly we could stop the traffic um, as we saw in the previous video um, and not have to get everyone sick. Um, so we're gonna have to change some things here because we're running out of letters of the alphabet, okay? So um, this first arrow, would be we have some coefficient a which will now instead of leading to i directly um, will get people into the exposed category right then we have this we want to go from a onward with our coefficients but b is not going from i to r anymore it's going from um, e to i you know i've already made a mistake here how do you get into the exposed category? You don't get exposed by uh, running into someone who was exposed. You need to get rid of that. We still go from susceptible to exposed the same way we went from susceptible to infected. Um, we have to um, have a susceptible person um, run into a, um, an infected person. So this is still, that's how you move from susceptible, you still have to bump into an infected person. How do you move um, from, uh, oh, and then my second one is wrong. How do you move? The rate at which people flow out of E is not dependent on how many are infected, because once you're exposed, infected people don't affect you anymore. Once the rate at which people leave E depends on how many people are in the exposed category. So the more people who are exposed, um, the more will become infected, all right? You go from exposed to infected. And then you have, um, how do you leave the infected? Just like you leave the exposed, you go from infected to hopefully recovered or at least removed um, the same way. And so, but we now need to have C times I. 
So because E is in the middle of the chain, we the big thing is we, we can't keep B times I in our formulas. We're gonna have to have BE in the formulas. And so we're gonna get a new set of differential equations here, right? Um, let me, um, uh, we can squeeze them in here. So let's figure out what these differential equations will look like. Maybe I'll stagger them and put them above. So ds dt, you're flowing out of that. So that's negative a i s, right? Um, now e is in the middle of the chain. So let me put this down here. D e dt, it's in the middle of the chain. So it has a i s flowing in and it has b e flowing out. Okay. So that's a new differential equation that we need to include. Um, the I equation, now look at di dt. So BE flows in, CI flows out. So we need to change that equation because it's no longer um, connected to S directly, um, but it is still flowing out to R. And then finally, if we want to find dr dt, as we look at the flow, um, it's only going to be positive. There's going to be a ci term in there. Um, so that's going to be, once again, that's going to change a little bit from what it was. Now we can still use the equation that s plus e plus i plus r is equal to one. So if you add up all of the categories, um, we will get 100% of the population. Um, so that's going to lead to, instead of having to use this in our model, um, we can say that I is equal to one minus everything else. So instead of using the differential equation for S, I'm sorry, I got that wrong. This letter right here should be S. S is equal to 100% minus the three other categories. So we're going to be taking uh, these three categories and we're going to subtract them from one um, to get the S value. So we'll stick with what we've been doing in the model. S can simply be found by subtracting all of the others from it. So let me pause and let's actually, um, actually I'll start a new video uh, for the MATLAB coding of this.